All right. <laughs> Quite a few things have changed since the last time we saw each other. I am 28 weeks pregnant today. If you're new here, welcome. If you are a subby that's been here for a few years, I got a lot of explaining to do, I know. I didn't want to start vlogging again without kind of giving some clarity on where I've been and just really just this process in the past like six months and how it's really been for me. So to be honest, this pregnancy has been the most stress-free, happiest I think I've ever been in my entire life. The most rewarding, special, like I don't even know how to go about it. It's like, I don't even know how to like articulate it, but it's just been the best I think life has ever gotten for me. I don't know, it just feels, and I know it's gonna get even better when I meet my baby boy, if you don't know I'm having a boy. Um, I did announce that on TikTok and Instagram, so hopefully you guys follow me on there. Like health-wise, this pregnancy has been awesome. I have no complaints. Um, little ones here and there, very surface level, but honestly, what I've gone through to get to this point, I'm, you won't hear me complaining about pregnancy or anything like that. Um, probably towards the end, I hear it gets a little uncomfortable, but now it's just a little, pretty much like what you would expect while growing a human being. Um, so yeah, I have no complaints as far as health-wise. Um, the reason why I did kind of do the first four, I think I went four and a half months without posting or anything like that about the pregnancy. We have gone through a bit of a rough patch when it has come to um, getting pregnant. Um, and a lot of things I just haven't shared because um, the reasoning is bad and that's why I think I haven't shot this video yet. Um, why, it's just I, feel really, really weird about posting really sad times. Um, as y'all know, like I'll talk about hardships as being a business owner, wife, things like that. But as far as stuff that really, like really, really gets deep down and I know it comes with like so much more, people feel, it's almost like posting like your relationship business. When people get a glimpse of that, um, when people get a glimpse of that, they just feel more inclined to know like everything about it. But um, I just wasn't in the space like mentally to really get into that and kind of, I never like to start something that I know I won't really want to finish. So um, that's kind of why I haven't mentioned like the hardships or anything like that, but it has been very difficult and I've gone through the roughest time of my life, I think. Um, but also while celebrating the most exciting things in my life, which is the weirdest thing. It's the weirdest feeling to go through, to go through so much like by yourself, but still like kind of put on, I guess, as like a united front, but it's not that I was being fake or anything like that. It was really just, I'm just a private person and things that are near to my heart and things that I, I just don't feel comfortable talking about. And even I do this like sometimes with my friends, which probably could be like a toxic trait, but if I don't want to talk about it or I don't want to elaborate about something, I'm just, I'm not going to bring it up. So, you know, um, but the besties know, um, my husband and I, we did do a round of IVF. Um, we've had two um, miscarriages prior to that, which kind of like led us to think that something was a little bit wrong down there. and. You know, so that's kind of like how this all started. Like kind of when we were engaged, that was like the first time I had gotten pregnant. And I was like, okay, well, you know, it's not like in chronological order that I would like, but you know, I was more so really blessed with the opportunity and stuff like that. Um, but I miscarried. I was like, okay, well, you know, it's unfortunate. I was really sad. And then we got pregnant again and then it was kind of like a really big health scare for us. Like we found out that it was ectopic pregnancy. Um, ectopic pregnancies are very scary. You could essentially die um, with that. So, um, you know, that happened and that kind of scared us. And we kind of, when we did go through the ectopic pregnancy loss, that was really a big deal for us. Um, we were really upset, sad. Um, and if you know anything about me, you know anything about my husband, 
we don't take no for answer. We don't take no for an answer. We work really, really hard for what we have. We work really, really hard at our relationship. We give, we get, like we have been, like this has been put in our mind and especially with my mind, if you're not putting in on something, like if you're not putting in like don't expect what you're not putting out. I've always lived by that. I've still to this day have always lived by like you get what you put out. Like I've always, always, always have lived by that. Like no matter what, and I still do. So it was really difficult for me, like mentally, to take a no because um you, you know i don't I, i've definitely been told no a few times and a few opportunities no but as far as like things that i've actually worked at and things that i'm passionate about and stuff like that you know being told no was like a big deal for us like especially for it was a confidence jab to me um definitely raised with a lot of confidence uh, my mom that's one thing that i always like you know commend her on um besides being the world's greatest mother but my mom is like raised me with so much confidence so kind of going through that has you know you know that being told no and stuff like that and it not working out and I'm super healthy and you know I've never been sick before let me knock on wood never been sick before so I'm just like dang why me so anyways um and then it was kind of curious to me and my husband like you know we were we started trying after we got married and nothing was happening so about last year we kind of were like, okay, we're gonna go to like a fertility place, get some testing done. Um, and the testing um, basically came back and was like, okay, well, one of your tubes seemed to be, um, you know, not no good or whatever. Um, I'm sure we can get you pregnant. We're just going to remove it. And then after that, we'll place, um, you know, we'll extract some, you know, the eggs and then we'll, you know, collect the sperm and then make the embryos and stuff like that. I was very fortunate in the process um, to have gotten five embryos. Um, I got them tested, I sent them off, I did the whole spiel. Last year, that's basically what 2023 looked like for uh, me and my husband, um, cause it is a long process. And then y'all know with me being a business owner, my husband being a business owner, um, you know, and us getting a new home and everything, it was just a lot. So, um, we know, we're looking for a new home. We haven't gotten the home before that. We were still in the apartment when we were doing all this. Um, so with all that, it was a lot. So, you know, we kind of, we didn't space everything out, but we kind of just did it when we had time. So it was about a year process and it's not, you don't just go to the doctor office and you're like, okay, take my eggs. Like it's definitely a whole process. Um, and with the surgery as well, getting my tube removed, that was like, you know, another process and stuff like that. And you have to give your body time to heal to then put the embryos back in. So obviously, um, with all that, um, it comes time to do the, um, to put the embryo in you and, you know, get the embryo put in and everything like that. Um, we did that and then you wait about 10 days to find out if the embryo, if you're pregnant basically. Um, so we did that and it was a no. Huge hit for us, um, emotional wise, financial wise. Um, it's very expensive. It is, it's expensive in a lot of ways. It's expensive emotionally and you dedicate your entire year to this process basically and it not work out was like insane. I already just explained to y'all how I am and I take L's very, very bad and I, and I wish I was better at that. I don't know if that's something to do with me being young, you know, but I just, you know, really, really took that very, very serious and I was very depressed for a long time um, last year and it just wasn't, it wasn't a good year. I was very unhappy. I was like, oh my gosh, like, we didn't, we didn't do like, you know, vacations or anything. We didn't do anything because with all the testing and stuff like that and the business, it was just like really difficult. So I just kind of wanted to give it my all and I felt like I did and I failed. So it was a big deal for me and for it to not come together was very tough. So, um, but oddly enough, that's when this, this is when the story kind of like turns. Um, 
weirdly enough, you're gonna think like, <laughs> I don't know, it's just so weird. So after we find out that the embryo did not stick, um, you basically just kind of wait till you're out on day 10, you take an HCG test, and if the number isn't high, the, the HCG basically just um, lets you know if you know the pregnancy is like a viable one or not, or you know it has to be over like a certain number. And it wasn't in nowhere near that. And so with that, um, you know, we you wait till the number gets back down to zero, and then um, after that you can try again, or you could just um, what was it? Uh, you can try again or you can just try natural. I heard a lot of people like um, get pregnant. I still kind of, even though it was a big hit for me, I, like sometimes like, I don't know if y'all ever gone through this feeling before, but it's like when you, when you get told like no, or you go through something traumatic or like a breakup or you lose a job, you get like this sort of like the Lulu about you. You know what I'm saying? So. I was delusional when I was like Googling a lot and I Googled like a crazy person during that whole IVF thing. Like I was like constantly trying to make sure that my symptoms were like legit and stuff like that and like just crazy, crazy Google person. Crazy. I was like harassing my doctors. Like I was crazy. So um, I was told that you have like a high chance of getting pregnant naturally um, after IVF or whatever because like all the medicine or something like that. I don't know. I just read an article, I was going crazy. So, um, it's crazy enough. So crazy enough, we actually did get pregnant after, about four weeks after the IVF, the failed IVF cycle. So uh, we're super excited. Um, and of course, like not of course, but so we were super excited. We were just like, oh, it was just meant to be. Like, you know, we're, we have all these like positive pregnancy tests because we never gotten a positive pregnancy test before. So um, yeah, we were super excited and we got all these no's with, cause like in, within the 10 days of you finding out that you're pregnant, some people get a positive pregnancy test um, and you can know, basically find out sooner after your IVF or whatever. So we were taking the test every day for 10 days. We took like two or three every day for 10 days straight. And all of them were no. So a few weeks later, when you know we tried naturally or whatever, and we found out that we were, we were super excited. After that, um, so um, I was about uh, four weeks, four or five weeks pregnant or whatever, and I didn't tell anyone because obviously I told my entire family about the whole IVF thing. They're taking care of me. You know, my my friends knew and stuff like that, which is another reason why I kind of didn't tell anyone about this pregnancy until down the line because um, I said so much during my IVF and I was so open with it because I was open with it with, with clients, I was open with it with my coworkers. Um, so like everybody knew, you know what I'm saying? Like if you knew me, like you knew I was like doing all this stuff because I didn't think like I was like high risk. I'm like, I'm young, I got embryos, I got it all figured out. Girl, please. So I didn't tell anyone. So anyways, I started noticing like blood and stuff like that. I won't get into too many details because it kind of gets me like a little like sad and stuff. So I ended up miscarrying that pregnancy. This is weird, I know. This is like, you're like, Amanda, so what, are you pregnant or not? <laughs> Let me get there. So I ended up miscarrying, miscarrying, I actually miscarried at my sister's baby shower, um, which was really rough and traumatic, scary, whatever. I didn't, I wasn't telling anybody, but yeah, it was like, I was like a bloody mess or whatever. And sorry if it's triggering, but I'm just telling my story. So yeah, I, after that, I was like, mm -mm. I worked too damn hard in life. I, I worked too damn hard in this life and I worked too damn hard to um, just go through this. I'm like, oh, hell no. Like I, you know, I go to church, I pray, I do everything right. I'm a good person. I'm very big on being a good person. I don't be messing nobody over. I'm about to say it, like I'm sorry. I don't mess over anyone. Like I, I believe in karma, I believe in all that. So like, I'm like, what the hell? Like, why isn't this happening for me? Like, this is so crazy. Like, you know, I just really feel like messed up. Like I was, it was low. I was like, damn, how low can you go? But 
that was low. So, um, so all this, that kind of concludes like November. So my sister's baby shower was like November 4th or whatever. So um, I kind of like just gave up on it. I told my husband, I was like, you know what? I ain't worried about that stuff no more. Like, you know, he was on the same page with me. Like he was like, whatever. Like thankfully, like I had, I have such a supportive husband and like, I wish I can give him his own like video by himself as to like how great of a man he is, but bitches are weird. So I ain't gonna do all that, but I got a good man and you know, I just kind of told him straight up. I was like, look, I ain't worried about this no more. Like, I just kind of want to like take the year 2024 to myself. Um, I was like looking at, you know, going to Europe for a month, like just to kind of clear my head and get back into like, cause I felt like I was going through the motions of every day, but it was like a zombie. And if you ever been depressed, you kind of know what I'm talking about. If you ever been depressed, but you still have like, like a, like a corporate job or a big job, or you still have family or you still have kids or you still have a husband. I was still cooking, cleaning, doing payroll, working, you know, managing, doing all these things. But it was just like, I was blank. Like, you know how you talk about some people like, that have like sad eyes? Like I was just, I just was kind of like going through it or whatever, but I was still like, you know, doing my thing. Like, you know, like I, yes, I'm going through a tough time, but I'm also not the type of person to show it majority of the time, which can be scary because you know, it's, I'm, I can be hard to read to my friends and I love my friends for knowing me, but um, I can be hard to read. I'm not going to lie. But um, because I don't like the pity party, I don't like people be like, oh my god, like poor you, let me give you a hug, like get away. I'm really weird. And I'm already, I'm already weird with people touching me. So like, yeah, I didn't, I didn't mention anything to anyone. Um, and yeah, that was just kind of like concluded like November. So damn, Amanda, you are six months. Mm, crazy. So one night, um, I'm not gonna lie, like. I used to get off of work, you know, have a few drinks and stuff like that, and you know, just kind of get back to like what I was, you know, I, that's it's New Orleans. I, I work in New Orleans, you know, so it's like a thing. Like, I get off of work, go have a glass of wine, go get dinner, or make dinner, have a glass of wine, you know, some shit like that, and um, just trying to get myself back to me. Um, I started working out again. I started. Um, I got my lips done. I got. <laughs> I just kind of like did a bunch of things like you know got my Botox like just doing things I got I got a big long weave like I just did things to make me happy I just kind of like was like you know what this is unfortunate that it did happen to me but you know it is what it is and I'm grateful for you know my health and I'm grateful for even the sad stuff because it only makes you a better person and I'm saying this now, but girl, I was boohooing. I was boohooing every day. <laughs> like, but in like me looking back, and I, I am, very, I'm, and I do this with a lot of situations, especially the ones that hurt me the most. They make me into a better person, and my temperament. And I almost like, I'm like, Ugh, am I getting like emotional? That's one thing. I don't think I'll ever be one of those people that cry on the internet. Uh, <laughs> I'm just never. I don't know. I just. I don't know. I'm just like weird about stuff like that. I just don't want to be that. And anyways, so yeah, so that was that. I was, I started doing a lot of things for myself. I started just doing a little bit more for even my relationship with my husband, cause he has been supporting me so much and Christmas comes along and I'm noticing we're going to Christmas parties and stuff like that. And I just feel, how do I, how do I describe it? Like, I just feel like hung over. Like, like, but I, w I wouldn't even be like drinking a lot. Cause when I say drinking, like my drinking is like a glass of wine um, or a glass and a half, Woo. you know what I'm saying? So um, I would feel hung over and then the f I, like, I was like, okay, that's weird. Maybe I just like that wine, like maybe it was like a cheap wine or something like that. got me hung over. I was like hung over for a few days. I'm like, that's strange. So after that, um, we went to like another like hangout or something like that. And I was like, mm -hmm. I had so many pregnancy tests at home. I'm like, that's so weird. I said, there's no way I would be pregnant. So, um, I kind of just like go with the flow still. Like I'm not really worried about it. And then I'm like, oh, maybe it's just like all the medicine and stuff. Cause IVF medicine makes you crazy too. I'm not gonna lie. I don't care what anybody says. This stuff makes you insane. Especially when I don't even take a Tylenol. I don't, I don't take Advil. Like I'm not, I'm not like a medicated person. I've never been any, like I've never 
done anything like that. Like I don't even take, I think the most I'll do is vitamin C. Yeah, that's it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like I've never, even when I am sick, I kind of like let things go naturally. And I'm not even one of those people that just have to have everything natural. I just have, I just didn't grow up like that. Like I don't, I, my mom did not give us medicine growing up. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, um, cause we were rarely sick also. So, and my mom, like we never had a medicine cabinet growing up either. So it was just like, never been my thing. To, so I'm just thinking like maybe my body's just purging all this bad stuff, y'all. So the weirdest thing, I was like, okay, I was telling my husband, I was like, well, let's just take a test. Just kind of rule out that. And you know, maybe I have the flu or something. Y'all want to know the day after Christmas, we find out that I'm pregnant. Like, cause I was like, no, I want to go to the doctor, get my blood taken and stuff like that. And so at the time I was only going to the fertility like institute that I, you know, was going to. And um, they were like, well, yeah, like your HCG is like insane. And you, so that, well, so the first thing after Christmas, it was my blood test. They were like, oh yeah, it's, it's high. It's measuring that you're, you're four and a half weeks. And I'm like, so that's kind of trifling. Like in my mind, I'm like, they probably think that we are so trifling. <laughs> They probably think that we're so trifling, but I was so like, no way, like that's so weird. And like, I think that's another thing too while me and my husband didn't say anything to anyone for so long, cause we were just like, there's no way. Like, cause all the stuff that we've been through, like literally in one year, like this is all has happened in 2023. So we're just like, uh, I don't know. Like we still weren't like, we still weren't like, mm, we weren't impressed. Like we we weren't we weren't really into it yet. We we're just like okay, we're just gonna go on with our normal lives. Um, but the way that the fertility um, institute basically does is they make you come like every week and they will measure me and how the baby's measuring and stuff like that. So I did that every week for about all the way up until I was nine weeks. And nine weeks, that's when they graduate you from the fertility place or whatever so we, we graduated you know they're recommending like actual doctors and stuff like that and we still weren't we still were not like excited yet because we we've, we've gotten excited so many times and we've we've done this it seems like you know we, we dedicated so much energy to this we still were not we we're just like okay whatever even though we haven't gotten this far it took us to be like i think 11 weeks when we finally got to the actual, not actual doctor, but the, we found a doctor that we liked or whatever. And you know, she looked through all of our records and all this other stuff and everything that we've, we've been through in the past like four or five years or whatever. So um, she goes through it and stuff like that. And I think it was our first ultrasound appointment. Um, that's the, it wasn't vaginal, it was the one on top. Um, I think it was just, that's just a regular one. And they were just like, yeah, you're having, you're having a healthy baby. And oh, he's like, oh, they're measuring so well, blah, blah. And I think it was like the first appointment with her. And I think we were like 11 and a half weeks that we were just kind of like, no way, we're having a baby. Like this looks crazy. Cause everything was, I was feeling good. Everything was looking good. Um, and then like oh, two weeks after that, I think at like 12 and a half weeks, um, we did like some blood work and we found that they were having a boy too. So it was just so weird because the embryo, the embryo that we put in was a, was a boy. So, um, because um, depending on like when you go get your embryos tested, they can tell you if it's a boy or a girl. Um, so we had, um, well, I don't wanna give the exact amount, but we ended up choosing like the boy. So uh, it was so weird that we, got pregnant with a boy it was like the weirdest thing like we we were just still like what the heck is going on like this is so strange and like still to this day like i'm six and a half months 28 weeks pregnant and we ha i feel him every day he's active he's moving he's grooving i got the bump i think for us we still were kind of still on the fence but when i got my bump at 20 weeks we were like okay it's legit like you know it's legit like we're like we're really pregnant like i'm like giggling about it now because like we're, we're like children right now like 
it feels like a 16 and pregnant like kind of situation because it's so weird how you can like be planning for something for so long and then like when it happens you're like in shock it's like well god's like well you did like ask for this like now i'm giving it to you now you're like not knowing what to do so yeah um about 20 weeks we started like telling everyone and um we, we got some furniture i was we were in the mall and i we were walking past pottery barn let me see my camera's still going um we were walking past pottery barn and i'm like i love this set like this is so cute so um i'm actually in my my son's nursery i'm living in a dream and i'm living in a bubble and i think that's why i've also haven't made one of these videos because i'm just kind of like in shock um and i just don't really even know like when i say the story it kind of sounds like made up because it it, it but it's just crazy it's just crazy so this is like this is what i'm living in it's the craziest thing that i'm going through and it's just the biggest blessing and i don't when, when things get real like this i don't like i don't immediately whip out a camera to be honest like i don't i don't immediately want to go and have like this whole big testimony and all this other stuff like i felt like I've, I've always like planned so much in my life and I've always just planned for the next step like with the IVF, with my business, with my marriage and everything has always been so planned and everything has always been such on a schedule. And this is the first thing that came on its own and surprised me. So I kind of just been living in the moment to be honest. Um, you know, I, I filmed a few of the I actually did vlog a bit during my IVF um, journey because I didn't want to talk about it. Um, so I will include some of that in this video if you guys do want to check it out. Um, I do have like my announcement for you guys at the end of this video, but that is where I'm at in my life right now. That is where I'm at with my pregnancy. That is that's everything <laughs> that's everything and me and my husband are just so blessed and so fortunate to you know have this beautiful baby boy and no my nursery's not finished it's not gonna be this blank that's so lame but um my husband i came home the other day i had a rough day at work um which i'll i'll get into that on my next vlog but i had a rough day at work and i had like We've had this um, for, you know, a few weeks in the house or whatever, and then I just came home to my husband making it, I mean, putting it together, and it was just like the sweetest, it was the sweetest thing. So um, I definitely want to film the video in front of my new um, crib, my baby's new crib, and then um, I got a little table. I got like the big stuff. I have this bookshelf, but um, my, my parents actually want to help me like design it and stuff like that. So I'll have a video on that later, but... Um, for now, I just kind of want to let you guys know where I'm at with everything. Please enjoy the, the next few. Or um, I, I will say, like, I don't have a video of me, like, crying when the results and stuff like that. I do have it filmed, but I did kind of delete. I did not kind of. I did delete that video because, like I said, it was very triggering. And another thing, when I did pull up all this old footage from last year, it, it was a lot to look at, to be honest. Like... It, w it was it was pretty heavy so but i do want to include this in there just for to let you know where i've been and where i'm at and to really kind of see you know the process and thank you so much for everyone supporting me and you know during this pregnancy and just really not taking it too hard if i'm not posting too much and stuff like that like i said i'm really just living in the moment and i'm really super happy and don't worry about me because i am on the moon every day i have to remind myself to you know check my phone and be on social media and stuff like that so yeah i will see you guys in the next one and please let me know if you have any questions i know this is a lot but gotta be real sure i gotta let y'all know what's going on so i'll see y'all in the next one bye tonight is the night we are doing our first round of IVF injections. Today is June 10th. I'm really excited to start this journey with my husband. I am also so nervous. Just 
legs. My legs. It ain't. It's not gonna hurt. I promise you. It's Please like a little. Don't gentle. Babe, Seriously, it's not funny. You gotta relax. Relax. Lay down. Okay. Well, just let me close my eyes. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. Babe. <laughs> Can, can you please put your legs down? Hold on. Babe. Is the right amount on there? Yes, my baby. 300. Is that what it said? 300. Okay. Well, you have to grab the skin like the video says. Oh, you saw the video? Okay. Baby. That's it. Baby. Baby. Okay. Why'd you do it? You don't see it because it's a little bitty thing. Alright, let's focus here. Okay, baby. So tell me what are we doing today? It looks like you're switching up the drugs a little bit. What are we putting in here? We're um, doing This is Cetratide that I'm about to inject right now. Okay. Oh, that looks different from what we've been doing. We've been doing, looks like this. Yeah. That one in your hand looks a lot different. Yeah, it's a different injection. So we're doing two tonight? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. S set your time. You know, the go now and men appear. I feel like I need to be distracted. You knew it was gonna hurt? I'm so about to you grabbed the camera, I'm looking like. <laughs> oh You're like, we need to skip this clip. Right. So he knew it was gonna be painful. It's a bigger needle. He's like, why are you grabbing well, my camera? Break, I gotta Wash your hands. It's very painful. I didn't like that one at all. I'm gonna do one more injection tonight. And then Saturday, we're gonna get to the doctor's appointment and see where we're at. If everything looks good, then we will be doing the egg retrieval on Monday. And it right now is Thursday. So everything's happening really fast. I feel like different from our first injection for sure but I feel like now it's getting real that one hurts today we are seeing how the eggs are looking, if everything looks good, then we will pull the trigger and hopefully do the um, egg retrieval in 36 hours. So that's what our appointment is today. I'm excited because I feel like all this is happening so fast. So yeah, they just go in and count the eggs and see how they're looking and how they're developing. And if everything looks good, then we can pull the trigger tonight but um yeah so that's what we're doing i'm waiting on the doctor hmm this is what we're looking at right now can't really tell you what but oh let me show you a picture of them what they look like For my YouTube education, it's supposed to be gathering like that, just like that. See, just like that. Mm -hmm. It 
It is 6 a.m. and it is egg retrieval today. They give you warm towels. Just nice. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna pick it up. <laughs> Today is the day. It's transfer day. I'm really nervous. Um. Yeah. Right now I'm just trying to fill up my bladder and um, me and my husband are going to go get breakfast together. I'm really nervous. Well, I'm also really excited, but I'm just like really, really nervous. I can't believe we're finally here and in 10 days from today, we'll take a, um, we'll take a pregnancy test and Lord willing, it's positive, but it all starts with today, so um, I'm really excited. All right, great. Tell me your thoughts. Okay, good morning. Okay. <laughs> okay, so how do you feel about today's transfer? Are you excited? Yeah, I'm, I'm absolutely excited. I'm just thankful that you sacrifice <laughs> yourself for us and, you know, extremely thankful for that. You didn't have to do it, but you did it anyway. And, um, you know, I'm just very blessed and thankful. Oh, that's sweet, baby. I love you. Let me give you those sugars. All right, guys. I curled my hair today. I don't know why. But something just told me to curl my hair. And a sausage McGriddle. Whatever you have. Uh, also like a bacon, egg, and cheese biscuit combo. No, sausage, egg, and cheese biscuit combo. Sausage, egg, and cheese biscuit combo. Uh, orange juice. Whatever you have. Yeah. I don't think I can record inside, so I'm going to try to get some footage on my phone. I'm getting the juice. Ah. Oh. So. Oh, I probably should wash my hands too. Look at my baby. This is the little picture that they gave us. I'm really excited. Really kind of tired, but um, yeah, I wanted to show you all this. Oh, so cute. I'm so excited. So excited. pregnant and I'm not gonna lie I'm a little nervous 
we tested every day and they were all negative um so i'm not really feeling hopeful today but um but i still wanted to like update because i haven't simply honestly because of the um, negative test um so obviously not in the best mental state but still gonna get up and we're gonna go see if we're gonna have a baby or not can't really see but um question mark one diet i probably should have labeled them but um it's my my um pregnancy test over the last few days today i am um 11 days post embryo transfer so i don't know if anybody wants to know that but yeah i'm 11 days post embryo transfer no symptoms no positive pregnancy test so not really hopeful but they say google says they and a few of the support groups some of them say that you know you don't really know until your blood work so let's check it out I just wanna know 